Medusa, Judas, the left hand path. All these esoteric symbols and more relate with the sixth arcanum. Known by many as the lovers, but experienced by anyone on the path of awakening their consciousness in the higher dimensions as indecision. We began this series by introducing how the tarot are not merely cards we shuffle and draw for easy answers to feed our egoic desires. This is because the 22 major arcana or tarot are sacred principles found in all ancient religions from the Tao and Buddhism to Egypt and Christianity. The magician teaches us about initiation and willpower. The high priestess teaches us how to balance this effort and work with clairvoyance. The empress demonstrates perfecting that balance to produce the inner light of consciousness. The emperor explains our spirit, our Atman, our innermost being. The hierarch provides the teachings of karma and demonstrations of those teachings. Within decision, we are shown how divinity within us is against the Medusa we all carry within, or the Judas we all carry within. These symbols are of our psychological vices that we must learn to overcome with willpower, clairvoyance, intuition, and the flowering of unconditioned awareness, consciousness, which is the true rose of love. This arcanum depicts a disciple, a spiritual aspirant working to awaken consciousness 100%. He is experiencing indecision, uncertain of which path to choose. His head is facing left, towards a woman who represents our inner Medusa, our psychological vices, egoic desires. This woman stands in darkness, a dream symbol, an astral symbol, denoting a sleeping consciousness. This is our awareness when ignoring deep, subtle truths from the heart of intuition and consciousness. The disciple's arms are indeed crossed over his heart, but his left arm covers his right. This shows us or indicates the left-hand path of egoic animal desire, such as lust. This is another dream symbol, but has nothing to do with left-handedness in the physical. In dreams, the right hand represents divinity, while the left hand represents our psychological vices, our legion of egoic animal desires like anger and pride. The disciple has yet to fully turn towards the right and become aware of his Divine Mother, who stands in light which is another dream symbol of unconditioned awareness, the light of consciousness. Instead, the head of the disciple is looking to the left, gazing at his inner Medusa. When our inner Medusa looks at us, when our inner desire bears down upon us, we become indecisive, like a person turned to stone. Our head contains all five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and scent. As explored in the previous video, the number five relates with the hierarch and cosmic law of karma, which is always watching our decisions and indecision. The hierarch on this card is above, in the superior dimensions, pointing a bow and arrow at our inner Medusa. The bow is in the shape of the first trinity, the highest dimensions of divinity, the world of archetypes, of gods and goddesses. This symbolizes how divinity gives us the freedom to choose, but is against any egoic desire, such as lust, pride, anger, etc. The disciples' legs and feet are in the waters of life. 
upon the inverted triangle. This triangle can symbolize different aspects. Perhaps most significant are the three traitors, which are found in our inner worlds, the three brains in our psychology. In the Christian tradition, the three traitors are represented by Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas. Judas represents our diverse egoic desires, primarily related to lust, who operates in our motor instinctual sexual center and centers. Any psychological vice or ego is ultimately connected with lust, which is desire for more pleasure, whether that pleasure is physical, emotional, or intellectual. We lust for entertainment, for food, for the attention of other people, and more. Desire is a fire that only grows when fed. This is wisely taught in ancient Hinduism through the laws of Manu. By enslaving attention to our inner Judas of egoic desires, we feed the fires of mechanical desire until all that remains is a dull ache that craves fulfillment, but cannot be fulfilled. We seek refuge in our pleasure, yet that very pleasure burns until all becomes ash to our five senses. Movies, video games, social media, all of it seems dull, and we sink into discontent and depression. Pilate is the traitor within our intellectual center. Subtle, egoic thoughts whispering justifications. People today call this rationality, but many atrocities are made by the inner demon of the intellect that rationalizes, justifies. This kind of intelligence is rigid, like water filled with mud that dries out and becomes brittle. That is how we should imagine our opinions, beliefs, and theories. Consciousness is expansive, free, and unconditioned light. Pilate is that part of our psychology that thinks itself superior, that is proud of its skepticism. Because it refuses to be guided by intuition, or is incapable of listening to intuition, Pilate fears holding any opposing view because it is unable to perceive what is true of anything. Pilate is blind pride. Perhaps the worst of all three traitors is within us as Caiaphas, the demon of the heart. This traitor within our emotional center is evil will who, upon receiving the will of inner divinity, still seeks to do his own will. Within our psyche, Caiaphas dresses himself in the robes of holiness as a master, but does not accept the universal Christ within. He is that part of our psychology that receives the vibrations of this age of Aquarius, in which sexuality is returning to its true sacred form, yet rejects that form and inverts the teachings saying that spilling the cup of Hermes is good and that conserving these energies is bad. In this way, Caiaphas views the light as pain, like how a person who spends all day in a movie theater in darkness and illusion feels upon walking into a bright, clear, sunny day. To our inner Caiaphas, that light seems like darkness and the darkness seems like light. Caiaphas drinks poisonous alcohol and calls it medicine, while rejecting the true medicine, which seems bitter at first, yet becomes blissful and even sweet as it heals the mind, heart, body, and soul. The three traitors are also allegorically represented as a black or evil dragon that we must defeat and transform or transmute into the dragon of wisdom. This dragon also exists within the superior dimensions of our microcosmos. Some depictions you can study are Saint Michael and the Red Dragon, Saint George and his dragon, Apollo and Python, 
Krishna and Kaliya, and Osiris and Typhon. One defeats their dragon by awakening their consciousness through meditation, the three factors of gnosis, and learning to always listen and follow intuition, the silent voice of our being. If our egoic desires dominate each of our three brains, we can place our condom six on each and intuit how this forms the infamous 666 or mark of the beast, which is our inner black dragon. If instead we turn our consciousness towards our highest divinity within, our Arcanum 1, the magician who is Keter, the father, we create Arcanum 3, our divine mother. Thus, by always remembering our divine mother in meditation and in each moment, we can successfully learn how to combat the three traitors and black dragon. The disciple also stands in the waters of life, formation. Water is a symbol of our sexual energy, the sphere of Yasad. In dreams, we will sometimes interact with mud, a symbol of our egoic desires or psychic impurities, errors, vices that obscure our perception. We purify this muddy water through fire. This teaching, as well as many other teachings, is conveyed by the seal of Solomon, or Star of David, which is formed by two triangles. The seal of Solomon is sometimes seen as a continuum or interweaving pattern that contains six masculine projective points and six feminine receptive indentations. This arcanum contains the symbols of Venus, reminding us of Arania Venus, who is the Divine Mother and of Love, as she is Goddess of Love. Along with the symbol of Venus, we see the symbol of Taurus, the Bull, who represents lust, egoic desire. Together, these three symbols are showing us that we must develop a continuum of loving union between the masculine and feminine, between a man and a woman, in alchemy, in White Tantra in order to slay our inner bestial desires of lust, of the bull, or dragon. When we preserve our creative forces in sacred sexual union between a husband and wife, we are working with the goddess of love, Urania Venus. If we do so consciously while comprehending our egoic errors, psychological vices, we can ask her to dissolve those errors, those vices, and with time and effort, they will reduce and disappear. And we can confirm this in our lucid dreams and astral experiences. Anyone working on alchemy, on the path of the lovers, can eventually gain the right to invoke highly developed spiritual beings or masters in the astral, if one awakens in the astral. We can call upon any master by saying, in the name of Christ, by the power of Christ, for the majesty of Christ. Then if we look up in the atmosphere upon saying this, we can see the clouds part to reveal the Ein Sof Aur, the central sun of limitless light. This is the light various masters are working to ascend towards, and from where they come down to help and teach us. The seal of Solomon, or Star of David, is also a symbol of the Ein Sof Aur, which is explained in the episode on Arcanum II, the High Priestess. Uh, as a side note, we can also say in the name of Christ, by the power of Christ, for the majesty of Christ, whenever we encounter a being in our lucid dreams or astral experiences and we would like to confirm the identity of that being. The Hebrew letter Vav literally means and serving as the connection between not only concept, words, and ideas, but energies, consciousness, and dimensions. Vav represents our spinal column, our connection to the higher dimensions. Our spine connects our philosophical earth, the body, to the superior dimensions, described as heavens, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and higher dimensions. Vav relates with the four worlds of Kabbalah, 
which from our limited perspective in the beginning, begins with the physical world of Asya, then ascends into Yetzira, Bria, and Atsiluth. However, the reality is different. Divinity descends from Atsiluth to create our spirit and soul in Bria, before unfolding further into denser dimensions of existence. This descent of energy into denser forms of material dimensionality relates with each number of the first ten arcana. Arcanum 1 is Keter, Arcanum 2 is Hakmah, Arcanum 3 is related with Bana, Arcanum 4 has said, and Arcanum 5 is related with Gebera. And with Arcanum 6, we reach Tifereth, our human soul, willpower. This is the essence, our consciousness, and it is us, what we truly are. Today, we commonly call this awareness or attention. Unfortunately, most of us are dominated by our various inner desires, by maya, illusion, the matrix, etc. We, the human soul, are in a potential state of indecisions between love of our inner divinity and love of our egoic desire, or we could say between love of heaven and love of hell. Most of us are stuck in hell psychologically, sinking into our own mud, in the astral in dreams, and in some cases nightmares. We are faced with a decision, or indecision. We can work to create the beauty of our human soul, Tifereth. Or we can sink deeper into our vices of egoic pleasures, mud. This decision is a continuum. We constantly face decisions, but we have the choice to do so consciously or unconsciously through intuition or through our self-wills of our egoic desires. As Shakespeare said, to be or not to be, that is the question. To be is to make every moment a meditation, gradually, more and more, listening to intuition. Not to be is to allow our consciousness to sink into a sleep so deep that we dream that we are awake. Through these teachings of the eternal Tarot, and Kabbalah, and with any true spiritual teaching of religion or yoga, we are learning to reunite with our inner divinity. But to know that divinity, first we have to pull ourselves out of the mud a little more each moment, each day, and clean up our mess. Divinity will help us, but we have to meet it halfway as depicted by the famous painting of the Sistine Chapel. Our inner God is not merely a man with a beard of an elder, but a being with many aspects, one of which is a man with a beard of an elder, but also one who is the Divine Mother, Anubis, angels, archangels, the Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, beyond any one description. This is how we can experience divinity more and more with time and effort. This is how we begin the dissolution of our suffering. If we learn to harness the water and fire at the base of our spinal column, Vav, we bring light to our tree of life. This is our being. And Tifereth, who is us, is at the center, the heart, who can sink further into the mud or lift upwards and ascend back into the light. Like the Christmas tree, our spinal column has colorful lights that we call chakras that we must learn to light. Our being has gifts and baubles that we call spiritual powers of perception, which are occasionally brought in the night by Christ. And when completed, our tree is crowned with a five-pointed star, like a hierarch, able to begin a true return to the Absolute, the Eternal Sun, the Central Sun, the Ayn Sof Aur. And that's it for this episode. Hopefully you found that helpful. Lots to meditate on. I'll leave links in the description for further studies. You can go deeper into lectures, the writings of Samael on Veor. If you'd like to discuss any of this in the Discord, uh, and, and or support the channel on Patreon, which is most appreciated. You'll find the link in the description below. We are about to do our monthly Q&A in the Discord, in fact. 
And thank you to everyone who leaves a like, a comment, anyone who subscribes is very kind and appreciated. And until the next episode, may you have inner happiness, joy, and peace on your journey back towards the light.